Hello, welcome to Sharp Spring Training. Today we're going to talk about forms. So let's jump right in. Um, to create a form, you can either go to Content and Forms. You can also go over here to Forms down here, and you can also access them from New Form. So let's start right there. Now this form we're going to use for Coffeematico to register the customer's warranty after they've made a purchase. So let's go ahead and name it product registration. There we go. So here, it, this is going to be a sharp spring form. You can also use native forms and um, third party forms as well, which you can use Salesforce, Rufu form stack. So this one's going to be a sharp spring form and all of these new leads are going to be contacts because they're already customers. Continue. So form, making forms is so fun. It's so easy. What we're going to do is you just pick fields and SharpSpring comes with these standard fields. We're going to ask for their first name. We're going to ask for their last name. We're going to ask for their email, which we probably already have their email. And we're going to ask for their company name. and their phone, mobile phone number. We're going to, if we want informed consent, we can get that there. And we would also, um, we can also put, I would describe myself as a, and this would, if we didn't already know their persona, assign them to a persona. There's also down here, you'll see progressive profiling fields. So if you drag a field below here, Progressive fields replace the completed standard fields, allowing you to progressively capture more information. What that means is if you already, if SharpSpring already knows their email address, it's not going to ask that. It's going to ask for their persona instead. So let's, this here, it just makes the form a little less overwhelming to someone who just wants to fill out a few fields. And also say if we already know their company name, let's put it down here as well. Now this here, a very important question to all marketers is how did you hear about us at the end? So this will be always be the last question and it's defaulted. If you don't want to ask how they hear, heard about us, then you would uncheck it. But it is always a good routine to get into to always ask where somebody hears about you. So now we, we want to know a little bit more information about this customer. So if you can't find the field in here, then we can make a custom field. So when we brought in our list, do you remember we made some custom fields? Here is company size, product and type. Those are the fields that we brought in from that list. So now they show up as custom fields. So we wanna know this stuff too. So we're gonna go, I want to know company size. It's, I wanna know their and the product that they purchased. So we already know that, but if we don't, I'm just going to put it down here in progressive profiling and here. So if we don't know the answer to any of these questions, it's going to show up. And these are the questions that will definitely um, be set up. Now, now I want to know the serial number of the product that they purchased. I don't have that in my custom field. So I'm gonna to have to create a custom field. So what we do is go here. Oh, actually, let's save this first. We're gonna save our changes. Here we go. So this here, when you, when you save it, it actually creates an embed code. So you can put this form on a web page somewhere else, like on your website. And this is if you wanna embed it, but we're not gonna do that right now. So we're gonna hit close. We wanna create a custom field. We're going to add a custom field and this is going to be a lead field. It can be used for anyone. So we're going to call it what is serial number of your 
product. We want this available when we're creating forms. We want it as a email merge variable. That means that that answer can be shown in an email. You can pull that in as a merge variable. And I want it visible in the contact manager. So if a, a customer calls the sales department or the service department, they can actually just pull up their record and they will see in the contact manager what that serial number is of their product. So we're going to make this a text input so that they can put, uh, they can copy that serial number in. Now, if we had a drop-down menu for this uh, for this particular question, this is what would this is what would show. You would fill in your own drop-down menu items. Now, you'll see here it says label and value. Values are words or numbers that are attributed to the field, and they are separated from one another, which allows for multiple and different selections within the field. So values are stored in the database of your instance of SharpSpring. But labels are what are displayed in the application. So they provide a way to see what the value is. And these can be the value itself, a category name, or anything else. So while values and labels can read differently from one another, the best practice is to have the fields and values match. So if you put, if you had a list of serial numbers, you could put and then add another. Add another. Here we go. And then if you wanted to, you could make this different, but the label is what would show. So there are different uses for that. You can read about that further in the text portion of this module. So there we go. So now we're gonna go back to our form. I'm going to go to product registration again. I'm going to edit our form and we're going to go fields, custom fields. What is the serial number? So it shows up right here. There we go. What's the serial number of your product? So that's, that's it. If we want to do um, some elements, if we want to put a um, some text to describe what's happening if we want to give instructions. So right above here, we're going to go, I'm going to place this here and we're going to say your serial number can be found on your invoice and on the back of machine just in case they're not sure where to find that serial number so you can add some instructions in there and if you want to add a header you can do that And there we are. So that is our form. It's that easy. We can also set styles as well. If you if you uh, are comfortable with CSS injection, you can put it here. You can have your submit button text. You can change that to whatever you'd like. You can. This is the de default button, but you can also create a new button. So let's let's. Um, make the button match our Coffee Matico branding. Let's make it more coffee colored. Let's bring this over here. And there's a preview of it. It has a little bit of a gradient. Let's make the font size a little bit bigger. Keep that border radius just a little bit bigger do some advanced options here, some hover colors, and this is where it would be in forms, and save. So we're going to click this button here for this form, and save changes.
So now our form, if you go to general, you can put a thank you page if you have a specific page that you want to redirect this to, you would put that URL here. Uh, otherwise, it just goes to uh, a very standard white page that says thank you for your, your submission. You can have an autoresponder on this form. You can, you can select an email here that, uh, that would autorespond once they filled it out. This shows where the lead status is going to be, which we set to contact already. And you can put a recaptcha on here too. If you find that bots are filling out the form, and this is where you change that. And we're going to save the changes. So now if we go to this form, we can see that there are 11 form fields, no submissions, no leads from it, and, uh, and it's not available, the cost per lead. So if I wanted to put this this form into a website, an existing website, I could just generate the code for that and I would copy it and paste it into my website code. And this here, if whatever pages that this form is on, this is where it would show up. And then here's where you see the submission data. So here you would see everyone who's filled out the form and all of their answers and you can actually export this data as well. So if this was for warranty registrations, you could export a list of all of the people who had filled out this warranty re registration. So that's it for today for creating Sharp Spring Forms. If you have any questions at all, feel free to contact us anytime. Have a great day.